Good morning, welcome back to the 120th. Today we are talking about the Mamiya C330. Uh, TLR, medium format, takes 120 film, shoots 6x6 frames. Introduced in the 1970s, um, and uh, when it was introduced it was, it was aimed more at the kind of professional end of the photography market. First thing to note though is that it's big. It's huge. In comparison to all my other TLRs, it is enormous. In fact, it's so big that I can fit behind it a Yashica 635, a Minolta Autocord, and a Yashica A. And it hides them perfectly, because it's so big. Obviously, that's a little bit of a joke, because of course the whole, you know. However, it is big. Um, so let's move some of these out of the way. This is obviously my, my standard workhorse, my workhorse TLR, which is a Yashica 635. And you can see, all joking aside, you can see the difference in size between those two. Um, the <coughs> Mamiya C330 is notably taller, notably wider. Important features to note with the Mamiya C330. So today we're looking at the Mamiya C330 Pro F. F for Freddy, not S for Sugar. There is a Pro S, which is the next one up or sideways or, or whichever way you want to you wanna do it. Uh, and as I understand it, what changed between the F and the S was a slight upgrade of kind of internal workings and things and how it all fit together to reduce the weight. Um, so there's not too much between a Pro F and a Pro S, if any, the Pro S is lighter. Now the, the Mamiya C330 was the last of the Mamiya C cameras, uh, and the Mamiya C cameras were, were characterised by interchangeable lenses, which is, is of course quite unusual on a TLR. In fact, I think the uh, Mamiya C series are the only uh, TLRs, uh, apart from the Kony Omega Flex, I think it is, um, they're the only TLRs that were made back then that had interchangeable lenses, that had an interchangeable lens system. So, TLR, and therefore uses um, exactly the, the same principle as all TLRs, which is two identical lenses on an identical plane, moving in and out in tandem. So whatever the top lens is seeing, the bottom lens is seeing. And if the top lens is in focus, the bottom lens is in focus. What was unusual, another unusual thing about this one, not unique, but unusual, was that, as I've talked about in other videos, specifically with the Yashica 635, which you will see, <coughs> When you focus the Yashica 635, the front there extends that far out, comes in that far. And therefore, you can't focus very close. It's very difficult to focus on close stuff. So with the Mamiya 6, the Yashica 635, um, your minimum focus distance is like 1.3 meters or about four feet probably. And on an 80 mil lens, that doesn't actually let you get very close. You can't fill a frame with someone's face, for example. Um, and you certainly can't do any macro work without extra bits on the front. So what the Mamiya C330 does is uses a slightly different um, method of achieving the same result. So the two lenses move in and out, creating, uh, increasing and decreasing the distance between the lens and the film plane. Um, but they do it on a, uh, similar to a large format camera, a, a rack and a bellows. So a light, tight, extendable tube. And as you can see, it allows the lens to get that much further from the film plane. So, I'll show you again. This is the uh, Yashica 635 at full extension. That's as far as it goes, okay? And here is the Mamiya C330 at full extension. And therefore you can focus on things that are significantly closer, in fact. Uh, now, sharp focus there, so what's that? That's about, probably about six or seven inches, just over maybe. Uh, so that is a close focus. One thing you might have noticed there is that in order to test that minimum focus distance, I was very deliberately sticking my finger in front of the viewing lens. And that is because um, of the parallax effect. And, and the parallax effect is also the main reason that most TLRs don't let you focus close. The closer you get with an object to the TLRs, the more pronounced the difference will be between what the two things are seeing. Um, and it is a problem that uh, affects all TLRs. Because the C330, or rather because the Mamiya's and the, with their bellows focusing system decided that they wanted to be able to focus close, they had to install something uh, that was going to give you some 
uh, weapon against parallax because otherwise you're shooting blind basically as you get closer and closer you have absolutely no idea how much of an effect that parallax is having um, on what you're taking it's very very difficult to frame what Mamiya have done is on the right hand side of the screen you will see a line descending that line corresponds with the top of your frame so that then within your viewfinder will tell you that the top of your frame is now here it is now halfway up what you can see and therefore you should be framing down there in order to shoot what you want to shoot it's not foolproof by any means um because i still can't see what i'm doing however it does give me a guide and i will take this kind of you know slightly cumbersome workaround i would absolutely choose that every day of the week and twice on Sundays over a camera that does not let me get close. Other things to note, so these um, Mamiya C interchangeable lenses uh, are really quite well thought of. The lens on here, the stock lens, the standard lens that, that came with the camera is the 80mm f2.8. So unlike the 635, it has a crank handle, it's a single turn, single action crank handle which both cocks the shutter and advances the film. Single turn and it's, it's cocked and, and ready to go again. You can use this one down the side to, to take your photo. Single turn. Uh, the camera has a clever mechanism which allows you to shoot multi-exposures if that's what you want to do. The crank handle will always wind on the frame, but if you put it onto multi, then you can use the blue dot lever here to cock the shutter. Fire, cock, fire, cock. Fire, uh, and it, will, it won't be advancing the frame. And not until you wind on does it advance the frame. If you have that set to single, uh, it won't let you do that. The C330, there is no light meter, um, so you are manually adjusting your uh, exposure. Um, which I'm fine with, I like that. So I'll load a roll of FP4 and then we'll take it out for a spin and see how we get on with it and more importantly see what the pictures are like from it. Looking forward to it, here we go. Now of course one thing I didn't do while we were, while I was um, in my office uh, was load the film. Uh, let's push it in, oh nice easy load, makes a change. Take up a spool already in the top here. So let's just roll that until we get a, a slot. And then we can start feeding. And there we go. We are underway almost immediately. Wow, this is very easy. Arrows line up with the red dots. And we're going to close the back. Clicks happily into place. And then we are going to wind until we see a number one. It's quite the gear, and there we go, we're done. Well, that was um, remarkably easy to load in comparison to some cameras. Um, the gearing, it's got quite high gearing on the arm. Um, so it is literally, it's like three turns and you're, and you're on frame one. And, and obviously every time you take a photo, it's a single turn um, to line up the next frame. Uh, all in all, this camera promises to be very easy to use. This is quite interesting. I like this, uh, this scene here. Now, on the surface of it, it looks like, you know, plain and simple. But what I find really interesting is that that's not horizontal. Horizontal is about there. Um, if you can see, I don't know, like the clouds feel like that's horizontal, don't they? So let's take a photo of this, it could be quite fun. Am I right? Okay, three, two, one. Look at me getting well into my landscapes, eh? Uh, interesting kind of, hay barn coming up here. Should look quite nice uh, on 6x6, because that is obviously the, 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 you know, the complication with 6x6 is that you're shooting a square frame. It, it doesn't necessarily lend itself very well to perfectly horizontal landscapes. Three, two, one. So there we go. Might be a nice photo, let's just see. All right, so that's sharp focus on the right in the middle of the tree. We'll see what that does. Now, wind on, and there's this curious horse who seems to be looking at me like I've got three heads. So I'm going to take a photo of him, or her. Let's try and get those eyes in focus. 
Lovely. Thank you very much. Oh. Just took a bit of a wrong turn across the field and uh, got some company. Hello there. Are they still following me? <laughs> oh, there are advantages. There are advantages to being out in a field. Right. And we're into the next field. And this field is full of sheep. Would you go, would you, would you sheep like your photo taken? Should we give it a go? Come on then, come here. Three, two, one. Oh. They turned away at the last minute. Oh, and a field full of cows. I, I do love a cow, I do. Let's have to get a photo of some cows. Come on. Well, this is the last frame of this roll, actually. I've had shot so many. And that is the end of the roll. And we are going to attempt a roll change in the field. So we're at one frame 12. And roll all the way through. And that's it. I mean, the gearing on here is so high that that is through almost instantly. And I'm going to pull across. Right, let's pop this out. There we go. Let's close the back from in. Just while I tighten this up. There's a lot of humping going on back there. Sorry guys, I feel really bad. I'm only depriving you of this, um, this good stuff. There we go, there you go. Yeah, see? Always get you some good action on this channel. Moving up to the top. Feed this into here. Wow, that is just... <laughs> there we go. Arrows and dots, line them up, close the back, and start turning. And that's it, we're on frame one. It just is so easy to use, so easy to load, there's no faffing, there's no, oh, that hasn't caught, that hasn't taken, or oh, I need to turn this a thousand times. Literally, like, clip, clip. That's um, crazy easy. But there's something beautiful about just this field with the, with the skies. I think a, uh, a filter here would have been perfect if I had a red filter with me, but I do not. Yeah, okay, three, two, one. Wind on. Let's, uh, let's test out the macro capabilities with some shots of this wonderful, these wonderful thistles. So first of all, let's just show you. Let's see if we can see that. So look at the line on the, the left-hand side of the viewfinder. So if you were this close, then the top of the frame would be there, halfway down. So it gives you an opportunity to correct your own parallax, essentially. The other complication that I'm going to need to consider is, is now bellows length. And that, it is a factor. I mean, it's not going to be as big a factor um, as it is in a large format. But it, it probably will start to come into play, especially at the closer focusing distances. So it gets a bit more complicated. But on other TLRs, it's not even an option. So. Uh, right, I've just got back and I realised I missed something. Um, the bar that goes up and down on the left hand side of the viewfinder to show your parallax correction actually has, actually also indicates, if you look here on the left, that there's a num there are numbers there that indicate how to correct for bellows extension. So the numbers indicated on the side of the viewfinder uh, are 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.53, and they correspond as you follow that. Um, frame indicator down the screen they correspond to how many stops you need to add so I think that that shot that I took that I've just taken should have been about two stops added uh, and in fact what I did on the day was probably one and a half I guessed at about one and a half stops so uh, but there is an indicator which I didn't know about until just now so that's clever and now I'm just seeing this actually it's quite a nice view of um, St. Arrol just just from down below obviously three two one Right, let's go home, develop these and uh, see what we've got. So there we go, I'm back. I've developed the film. Uh, the photos are good. They are clean and crisp and uh, beautifully in focus. The, the lens is good, it's definitely good. Photos are a little bit dull perhaps, as far as I'm concerned, but that's uh, my fault, not the cameras. So yeah, all in all, great camera, so easy to use. In comparison to, to some of the other uh, TLRs that I've used, it really is just a dream. But it is 20 years younger. 
Uh, and that's 20 years of, of design improvement, 20 years of, of manufacture improvement. Everything works. Everything's really well designed, really well thought through. But it lacks a bit of character. And I'm going I'm, yeah, I'm to curse myself now and I'm going to say something that is going to make me want to punch myself in the face. Because every other video I've created on this channel has been all about this constant pursuit of sharpness um, and, and and trying to get things immaculately in focus. This lens is sharp, it's really sharp. The viewfinder is clear and bright. The images this camera creates are crisp and clean and, and all the rest of it. It's everything I've ever wanted. So why don't I like it? I think, you know, it's a bit like your kids, isn't it? That, you know, you want them to be well behaved and, and quiet. And when they give you a bit of back chat and they, you know, tell you where to stick it and tell you what an idiot you are and all the rest of it, then, you know, you have to react. Um, but then once, you know, once once you've reacted and told them off for it, you're sitting there and there's a bit of pride, you know, there's a bit of pride for, for how feisty your kids are and that they've got, a, they've got something about them. And and I think it, that's the kind of a good comparison because this is a great camera. This is your goody two-shoes child who is everything you've ever wanted on paper. But when you've got it and there's nothing else to it, it's a bit disappointing. The The question that I face with all of these cameras, I'll go out and I'll buy them and, um, you know, look, watching out for them for a good price. And, and the plan is to buy them, to try them out, clean them up, fix what needs fixing and then sell them on again. Um, and, and, you know, do a YouTube video in the meantime. Um, am I going to keep this? I don't think I am. So there we go. That was the Mamiya C330. Uh, it's a great camera, terrific camera, but uh, not for me, not right now. Uh, we went on a date, we didn't hit it off. Our lives are going in different directions right now. So there we go, loads more stuff coming up on the channel. I've got loads more reviews coming up. Um, well, I'll be doing the two cameras that you saw at the beginning of this video, the Minolta Autocord, the Yashica A. I'll be doing some reviews of those, taking them out for a spin. So if you enjoyed this and you wanna see more and you're interested in your medium format and large format, then hit that subscribe button and you will get notified of uh, whenever I produce a video. Um, drop me a comment, say hi, uh, tell me about your experiences of the C330. Does anyone agree with me? Does anybody agree that it lacks a bit of character? Oh yeah, finally, big shout out to Simon Forster of Large Format Photography Podcast and Classic Lenses Podcast fame for his 3D printed uh, lens caps, which fit like a glove. Good find on eBay that, happy with that. And never gonna lose it because it's a hideous color. But that's a good thing, right? Okay, bye.